So, uh, let's go ahead and create a stored procedure for, uh, in this tutorial, let's go ahead and stay, create a stored procedure which returns XML from our database. And over here uh, in our MVC application, we have our database, uh, we have a table called users, and we have a view called users settings view. And this is the uh, table that we're going to be returning as XML, which is a projection of this table. We never should be or want to be returning this table. We want to almost always be returning a view when it comes to a user table. So uh, I'm going to click on our project here. Instead of, uh, you can click here and hit undo stored procedure, and it will give you a quick little setup here. And I'm going to call this uh, users. Uh, view, I'm going to call this view users settings. Okay. And our first parameter, we're going to call this a username. Okay. And I'm going to type begin, end, and go. And I know our username uh, is of length 100, so I'm going to say varkar 100. This is required. <laughs> And now let's select something from our view, and I'm going to say select all from, and I'm going to say users, user settings view, where username equals at username. So it's going to select from this view, uh, which is again a projection of this, uh, where the column username is equal to the parameter which we pass through the stored procedure called username. And we're going to say for XML raw and we're going to give the uh, we're going to give the uh, elements the name of users. We're going to leave, we're going to say root and we're going to say root is user, well we'll leave it as root actually. And we want to return it as elements. Uh, and that's all there's going to be to it. And uh, so I'll run this store procedure here, and I'll show you a little bit about kind of what happened here uh, with changing raw and root and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and update our database here. Okay. And now I need to refresh my folder. And to do that, I just right-clicked and hit refresh. And you can see this popped up. Now let's go ahead and again I right click on our stored procedure which we just created and I'm going to hit execute. And this fun little prompt is going to come up and let's give it a value. Uh, let's see here. Let's give it a value. Let's see of, we're going to give it a value of what's in here. Let's see. I need to look. I'm going to go show table data. Uh, username is test. Okay. So we're going to execute this as a value of test. And sweet, so now it ran this procedure. Don't worry about this. This is just something that it generates for you. Uh, but this, you can see it returns the XML right here, and then it has a serialization. Let's click that. And now we have a root. We have a tag users. We have test as the username. We have email and example.com. A uh, bunch of arbitrary numbers and the last login date, which apparently was in 1930. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so what happens maybe if I put more table data in there? I'm going to test one password, email at email.com. I'm going to put some more random numbers, and I'll put 10, 20, 19, 31. There we go. So now I just insert some more information. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to re-execute this. I'm going to click this again, which it didn't, did not, oh, uh, because it's only selecting just that table. I see. Um, well, that's fine. So now let's change this to, what did we, what did I just name this other person here? Test one. So now let's select test one. And now let's go ahead and execute it. And now we have test one's information. So that's a nice little way, and uh, it would return a list of tagged users. So um, what happened here and what we did in our stored procedure was we have, I'm going to put these uh, underneath here. So bringing up this table, we have, uh, we said for XML raw, and raw would have been just root 
row, row, this would actually said row, but instead raw, we changed the parameter to users. So now this says users and the root, which stands for the root element, we renamed the parameter root, which is default anyways. If I would have put this anything else, this would have been that name. And then saying elements actually means that I want the columns that are returned from our users table to be displayed as elements. I don't want them to be attributes. So actually what would have happened before then is this would have been a closing tag and it would have said value is equal to test one instead. That would That's what would have happened if I wouldn't have put elements. Um, this would not have been there. They would have been just looks like that. So um, I often find that uh, depending on what you're working with, they can be more efficient to do attributes or more efficient to do elements. In my case, I almost almost always uh, use at elements, and that's typically what I see most people use too. So, and that's going to be uh, kind of concluding this video for now on how to return some XML from a database.